Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Full Indie. Welcome to Feedback Indie. Yes. All right, it's December, last meetup of 2014. It's kind of crazy. It's already went by so fast. I uh, want to say a big thank you guys for being here. A uh, big thank you for fan club. Thanks guys for having us. And thanks for the project there. We have all kinds of guys to thank because it's the end of the year. They've been supporting us all this time. And first up, we've got an X Pro. Thank you, an X Pro. We also have Proctos. Thank you, Mike. Kerberos, who will be doing a presentation in a few minutes. Slick Entertainment, back from Vegas. Eastside Games, I don't know if there's anybody from here. Thank you, Eastside. Power Up Audio. Victory Square Games, thank you guys. Crime Games, where's Crime? Nowhere. Radio Games, thank you, Andy. Play Entertainment. Hybrid Sound Works, let's go over there. Ninja Robot Dinosaur. You guys are the best table. Red Oak Entertainment, no, Red Oak, straight up, not entertainment. Red Oak. MD Power and the Little Train Epcot. Thank you very much, guys. We've had a little bit of a snack food the project tonight, so there will be uh, less presentation than expected. But we are starting it with Danny and his team, or just Danny, come on up, and the team. And they're going to talk to us about their game that is called uh, uh, Redemption? No. Free Collection! I was so close. A few words away. So basically, uh, we worked very hard on this. We're very proud of this project. We brought it here for a demo, so you guys, you guys can uh, come up, uh, play the game, and give us some feedback. 
Uh, we would really uh, like to hear what you guys think. And a uh, big shout out for Shane, who was our mentor on this project. I think you deserve a round of applause. Thank you. It's a quite nice little game for mobile, right? Okay, the video. Let's get going. My name is Dustin Williamson. I graduated from VFS Game Design Program in August. Um, currently a design intern at Relic Entertainment. Um, you guys know Sandra already. Our third programmer on the team was Emilio Paleas. He's Mexican. Paleas, sorry. He's Mexican, so it's hard to say his last name for me. Um, and he's working at Savvy Apps right now in the States somewhere. So um, This is kind of a weird game. Um, so, <laughs> the, bit, the idea basically came from the weird theme that we got, which was something along the lines of making poor choices, so we based it off of a game show where people make poor choices by being on that game show. This game is for a mobile. Uh, it's completely free. There are no advertisements. There are no mod like in-app in purchases or anything. Uh, mostly because we're actually legally obligated to not release it commercially. So you can get it on your iPhone. Uh, you can also get it on your Android phone. It's also on the web, and you can download it. All kinds of stuff. We have a total of 13 different shapes that you can fit through. Uh, unfortunately. They kind of show up repetitively. Uh, we'd like them to show up not so repetitively. <laughs> this is Sandra playing the game, by the way. She's not very good. <laughs> okay, this game is really hard, first of all. Especially if you play on the web. Um, we have a page that you guys can play the game in. It's called playingpostperfect.com. And it's like basically this super absurd Japanese themed um, game. The actual Japanese translation for a game is Wet Dog, but we decided to rename that when we uh, put it up for the App Store and the Google Play. And um, it's really fun, it's really addictive. I would recommend that you play it. And um, we had, we built two systems for this game because, oh god. I'm sorry. Uh, we had two systems at first. The first one was you cycle through the limbs. So first of all, you move the torso, then you move the arms, and then you move the legs, and you could like revert back. But then we got it so you can just like click on the limb and rotate that. Yeah, so I guess the reason we're presenting it tonight is just for the sake of like getting it out there. Um, we aren't, it's not something we're working on right now. It's something that we possibly could in the future start a Kickstarter for if 
it got enough attention. But uh, so yeah, tonight is just basically like, here's the game, check it out. It's cool, try it out if you want. Um, there's a lot of things we'd like to change about if we got the opportunity, but it's just not on our radar right now. But we wanted to show it with you guys because we got a lot of good feedback on it and uh, it's kind of addicting. <laughs> we also realized that our target market is um, white females age 18 to 24 who like pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, my high score is 24. Sandra's is 19. Oh, 13. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I have the highest score on the team. Just. Yeah. Just say. Just say. That's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, you guys can check out the game on your phone. So, thank you for. Oh, that would have been awesome to get a live demo of that, actually. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the demonstration. Uh, we were supposed to have a few more uh, game demos tonight. Uh, we were trying to, when we did the showcase two months ago, there was a lot of submission for the uh, game demos, and we were trying to um, work away to it. But due to some uh, green issues with the projector on PC, uh, we are having less demos. And we are moving right on to... Chris and Martin are going to talk to us about Kaiju A Go Go. I don't know if I pronounce it properly or not. And um, we have the Chris to be coming up. Hi, everybody. Not a bad turnout for a rainy night and the end of the year and all that. Um, and speaking of end of the years, that's uh, why we're pretty happy to be here and talk about our game. Uh, some of you may have heard about it in passing over the last half year that we've been working on it. Uh, and you may even have seen an early build of it that we had a few uh, full indies back. Uh, and it's here again in the demo pit corner there if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but this is the game we're wrapping up the end of 2014, which is Kerberos' 10th year as a Vancouver Independent Studio. So we're pretty... Uh... Go team! So, um, I've been up a couple times and talked about games, and usually I have him stuck away somewhere as, as our lead designer making games, which is a fancy way of saying as I'm less important to the production of the game than he is. Um, so I come up and talk about games usually, but tonight Martin's going to come up and gonna walk through some of the, the highlights of the game and some of the plans we have for it. And uh, yeah, we're getting close. It's coming out uh, early next year. So this is the perfect time to wrap up the year and let you know what we got planned. So I'm gonna hand off to Martin and I get the remote. Hello everybody, I'm Martin Sarlis, um, grumpy old man designer at Kerberos Productions. Um, Basically, this game grew out of the same design philosophy that Kerberos always does, which is we play a lot of games, and then we hit a wall and go, huh, we want to play a game, but it doesn't exist. So, we should make it, I guess. Um, I come from the old, old school um, monster attack games, like Crush, Crumble, and Stomp, movie monsters. Back when, you know, when they used to sell games in plastic bags. Um, and I've always had a fondness for reviving uh, old ideas with slightly more modern technology. And this is where this idea grew out of. Um, because I'm just not interested in making metal or candy crush on anything like that. <laughs> um, so, there's a lot of monster games in it, and there has been, but I've always been slightly disappointed that when I rush out and buy them, it's either Rampage 7, which is fun, don't get me wrong, or it's some sort of monster pit fighter where the monsters fight each other and maybe there's a city and that's about it. Um, what we were really looking to recreate is that idea of being the mad scientist who runs a giant monster and uh, runs it on rampage throughout the world. So from first... Um, let's go to... I like to go. There we go. Um, from the get-go, 
you're supposed to feel like it's you against the world. In this case, you and your pet monster, which you, a lonely and bitter period of your life, made on your own private little island, and now you've got to leash it on the world until the world bows at your feet and does what you say. Um, so from this perspective, we wanted you to feel, to give you slightly that XCOM feel looking at the world, but from the opposite point of view, instead of trying to save everything, make people feel better, you're now looking at the world looking for vulnerable spaces, cities that you can knock over easily with your power of your monster, and basically just create mayhem while pushing the agenda of deteriorating the mood and the morale of the world. Um, the important thing for us was that you and your monster should have a relationship. This isn't just a tank you built to go out and knock over a few cities. This is your best friend. And as a gamer, you should have a billion things to do with it. Or in this case, close to 99 powers that you can view it with. Um, the idea there was that we wanted you to go through a game not just months ago. Okay, I've figured out the monster. It's done. I've optimized it. It's like, no. Given that every normal run-through should probably let you get through the world and only train about 30 to 35 powers, we basically wanted you to be able to go through about three times at least just to see every power. Never mind to see how they combine with each other and which ones fit your own best suggestions or argue with people on the internet about them. Um, and we also really wanted to push for stuff that would let you go in a direction of your monster. So if you wanted to go in, I just want to deal death and destruction and have the most number of attacks I could ever have, you could go that way. If you wanted to do the, I want to be an unstoppable mountain of power that just crunches everything but no weapon can harm me, you can go that way. And, as you can see, you can harm large buildings like that. <laughs> the other thing you wanted is the cities to feel like you were actually conquering different cities. So while this is a very cool little retro view of a city, it's also every city in the game represents the real city. New York City looks generally like New York. It has the, like, the cartoon-sized uh, special place at the hits, the Statue of Liberty, the Chrysler Building, my personal favorite. Um, Vancouver has its own. Go stop the library if it makes you happy. You can do that. <laughs> Um, the point is, it's a game where you have to do a lot of city stomping, but we wanted those cities to feel unique to you. So they react in different ways, they have different defense units. Um, visually, like I said, they have a different style for their buildings. You have to do it and pound on them and feel good about it. So people run away from you screaming. If you step on them, let's just say organics appear. I don't want to say what those organics are, or what you should be eating or whatever. But they're important to your monster. And let's just leave it at that. Um, other resources that you can claim from city, like power or knowledge, goes back with you. And you can go back to your secret base, hidden, of course, in the ocean, on a deserted island, where people shunned you in the first place. Um, there you can build up different structures, um, use the resources to advance the power of your monster, uh, give certain advantages to yourself. You can build up structures that lower the morale of the world or will sway enemy leaders to do what you want. Part of the personality of this is it's not just the monster. It is you and the monster. So the you part is threatening cities yourself. Instead of pounding on the city, maybe demand that the city rolls over or gives you some money. The great thing about the game is if it doesn't roll over, you pretty much have to go and beat them up. Because if you don't, the rest of the world notices you chickened out and they all get feeling happier about themselves, which is a game what you need. Um, the greatest thing about the end game, though, is that the world eventually prepares. You have five years to get up there and crush the world. Around that point, the squabbling will be over and the world will start getting together and they'll start coming after you. So instead of fighting in their city, you have to fight in your own secret base to hold them off and push them back until you go out and get them again. So it's a flips to either side and it allows a nice level of uh, secret villain base building, putting in your secret towers, that sort of thing. What? There we, go. there we go. Also, your monster grows up with you. As you learn and grow as a person, and learn how to extort, your monster also learns and grows as well. Bigger guns, uh, bigger weapons, more hit points. <laughs>
The choices that you make in terms of which weaponry you put on it also dictates when it jumps to its new size. And of course, when we put a game like this, we want the monsters to be the main part of the game. So as we look to the future and expand out from that point, we have a fairly large list of monsters to fill the world with. Our first two will be um, Gordon and Shrubby will be the next two entries to complete chapters two and three. And then after that, assuming that the world likes this game, there is a whole big world of stuff coming. Whole big world of pain. All these monsters will have their own power sets. Also be able to give different skeletons or shapes to them. And if all goes well, next year we'll also see the first uh, major expansion for this title, which will be along the lines of Monster Island, which to give you an idea, just think, gotta catch them all. <laughs> then we're gonna go into the end screen. I like the end screen. <laughs> there you go. Happy holidays from all the monster makers and all the crazy scientists at Kaiju Productions. And let's all keep them flying for next year. Keep going with this crazy little business. Good night, everybody. And like I said, we're hiding in the back corner if you want to come check it in. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to bashing some cities. I like your premise of the game already. Um, next, uh, John Paulson, if he's still... Ah, there he is. Uh, John is from the Indie Fund. Most of you probably know about John or the Indie Fund already. But there is a, they have an initiative that is called uh, um, uh, Out Control GDC, is that it? And John would like to tell us a bit more about that. If I can get your presentation going. Hi, uh, I just want to tell you about two things this evening. The uh, first thing is Indie Fund. Uh, Indie Fund began a few years ago with uh, seven developers. <clears throat> Sorry. A few other people in Indie Fund made World of Goo, made Journey, and Braid. And they've taken their, their money that they made from their multi million games and are putting them back into to you guys. So some of the games that they've funded have been Antichamber, Monaco, Donut Country, or Donut, Donut County, and they've also done some student games called Due Process, and even some global game jam games, one called Mushroom 11. And recently they've hired uh, three of us, Simon Ferrari of NYU Game Center, Kelly Wallach of Indie Mega Booth, and myself, to find games, come out to you guys, and see if you're interested in working with the Indie Fund. And so if you want to apply, all you got to do is send us an email. There's tips for submissions on the website and all the, the funding terms. About 14 developers come out and show off their one-of-a-kind controllers. Right here we have Analog Defenders controller uh, made by Droken Alexander Martin, who made um, Starseed Pilgrim and Patrick Denham. They made a, a pretty weird game that was like Space Invaders, but used all these knobs Switches, uh, sliders. Oh, what happened? Uh, um, and another developer's uh, creation was called a dozen sliders. He's made. He made. He didn't have a dozen actually for the show. There were about seven, but they were just. Um, Mono switches that went back and forth, and then uh, Lucky Frames, Rolf Pilar was a caterpillar sim. You had people rolling around on the ground, um, <laughs> looking up at a screen, trying to chase each other and eat apples. And the way that that was controlled was that um, there was a string held at their waist, and it could sense the way that they were turning. So um, I posted last month everywhere on Facebook. Hopefully, you guys saw the announcement, but the deadline for uh, this year is going to be next week. And so it doesn't give you too much time, but if you can at least get a prototype out of the gaming controller, then you'd have about three months to go ahead and polish up your submission. 
Uh, some of the things that, that help make controllers are Makey Makey Arduino and practically anything with a USB adapter. If you can attach it to your computer, you can make a pretty weird game about it. So hopefully you guys can create something and I'll see your submission then. Thanks. So um, we're wrapping this up. We're getting to the point for announcements. So if you are interested in doing a kind of announcement, please uh, come over here. Uh, in the meantime, though, there's a bunch of things like we always, I always mean to say, but I always forget. So I made slides this time. I won't forget. First one is: Do you want to do a talk? Do you have a great subject, something you're passionate about? Do you have a great you idea? Do you want to do a postmortem on it? Please just get in touch with us. We'd love to. Like we we have three, two or three presentations per month, so we run through a lot of stuff. So we'd like to have a, a little bit more going on. So get in touch with us and for full in the or send us to a personal email. Uh, also, we are recording these things. Uh, hopefully not right now, uh, but normally when the real people talk, uh, we record this and we post them online. We they are on YouTube. They are connected through Facebook. Are you on the Facebook yet? All right, they're on the Facebook nonetheless. And they're on YouTube too, so it's cool. I have a look at them. Also, finally, uh, this wouldn't happen without those volunteers. Um, so a big thank you. There's a, the last one's a bit of shady guy, but the rest of them are doing a really good job. <laughs> All right, community announcement time. Who's first up? Thank you, sir. Hello everyone, my name is Graham, and in January I am producing a television show about the local game development community. So what I need from you guys is um, your business cards, uh, because I need a fuck ton of guests. Um, so the big thing I want to say here, by the way, is I don't want any like self-selection happening. Like if you have a project, if you're a student or whatever, don't go like, I'm not ready or whatever. Let me make that decision, okay? Please give me your fucking card <laughs> so that I can decide when the right time is to have you on the show, right? If your game is gonna come out in a few months or whatever, we'll get you on then when you're on Greenlight or whatever, okay? So please, I'm here all night for the love of God. Talk to Graham. Talk to Seriously. Graham. Yes, please do, talk to Graham. Listen look, to Kevin. Look, look, look. You know he's legit, okay? <laughs> all right, thank you guys. I think you're going to have to come out. Ah, this guy. You promised me we'd do the, these announcements in a funny voice. Let's see. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Jacob Burgess. I am the voice actor, and I just wanted to take a moment, because this is the end of the year. I moved to Vancouver from New York City about a year and some change ago, and I started coming to these events. So I wanted to stand up here on this grand, wonderful stage and say to all of you, thank you. I would not have the friends that I have here in Vancouver. I was exceptionally lonely. The people that come here are a fantastic, wonderful, talented group of people. You take tiny bits of magic that you find in your head, and then you make them come out and put them together into other tiny bits of magic that go into tiny bits of magic that I can then play and enjoy and take part in. And that is fantastic. When you come out here, Talk to people. Talk to everybody. You don't know what connections you're going to make. You don't know what's going to happen. My career has been exceptionally positively affected because of the people in this room. I have some of you as clients, and I'm very honored to have a good more number of you as friends. So thank you very, very much, you beautiful bitches, bastards, and everything in between. Merry Christmas, and have a goddamn excellent New Year. And if you want to know anything about the voice acting business, Please talk to me. You can ask me to do funny voices, depending on how much I've had to drink. I will most likely do that. I also will accept drinks to do funny voices. Can't wait. So thank you very much, you lovely, lovely people. Very good. Uh, I see Anna. I wonder what she's going to be talking about. Shocking news, everyone. 
It's Global Game Jam time again. Right. Uh, so last time, last month, I announced that volunteer registration was open, and now we have Jammer registration as well. If you go to ggjvancouver.com, you can register as a Jammer, or you can sign up as a volunteer. You can do either, or do both. It's really quite flexible. Thank you. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Chris Norris Jones. I'm a local freelance games journalist, and on December 27th, I, along with a group of local gamers, game writers, and developers, will be putting on a three day charity event for Child's Play. I'm sure most of you know who Child's Play are. They're a children's charity that buys games and toys for kids' hospitals, including the BC Children's Hospital. Uh, we're calling it the Metal Gear Marathon, and for 72 straight hours, I and a huge group of local ne'er do wells are going to be playing through the Metal Gear Solid series. All of which is going to be live streamed via Twitch. Uh, thanks to the amazing charity of people, both locally and internationally, we've raised almost a thousand dollars. But we're looking to really increase that from here. Uh, I'm going to get the word out to as many people as possible. We'll be holding a number of contests with prizes, games, toys, up to a Wii U. And uh, we're looking for any local studio or developer willing to donate something to the prize pool, or uh, if you're just interested in coming on and talking about your current project, or even just want to come on and talk about your solid anything silly like that. That would be awesome as well. Um, if you want to donate to Child's Play, you can check out our website at MeadowGearMarathon.com. If you have any questions at all, if you're interested whatsoever, come and track me down. Thanks, you guys. Happy holidays. All right. Uh, we have, uh, okay, one of the person who was supposed to demo their game today, and they ran into the green project or problem. Uh, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give a shot at... Um, Showing their trailer that they have on now, if you can point me in the right direction, which should right thing to click. Press kit. Press kit. And, uh, well, why don't you talk to us about a bit about the game in the meantime? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacob, and I work for Space Bullet Dynamics Corporation. Just Space Bullet for short. Uh, we were supposed to do, to do a demo for you guys uh, at the beginning of the show, but everyone, everything went really badly, everything was really green, and that's no way to see a wonderful new video game. So I figured in lieu of that, I would just show you guys our uh, latest video, uh, produced by Carl White. I don't know if you guys know or not, but he's a wonderful guy, and he did a wonderful video, and it just kind of gives you an idea of what our game is about, not the gameplay, because we were going to show you that, but uh, we couldn't. Uh, but at least it gives you an idea of what we're going for, uh, so you guys can uh, check us out and uh, hopefully enjoy it. You forgot to mention that they are actually, it's VR and you're driving giant me uh, mechanic robots. Yeah, that's, Just, that, that's kind of an important part, right? Yeah, it's, it's about giant robots fighting each other with missiles and uh, lasers and rockets, and it's really awesome, and it's in VR. And it's a made-for-VR experience. In other words, we didn't just like put that stuff in afterwards. It's you know built from the ground up. So it's really an experience you kind of have to see in VR to really appreciate. But at least you know we would give you something that uh, will maybe get you excited, right? So let's have a look at video, which maybe will work. I don't know. <laughs> so. Josh, and I've been working in the computer animation and video game industries for over 10 years. Hi, I'm Jacob. I come from a 10-year background in making AAA video games. I write the code that makes the game come alive. I'm in charge of making all things art, whether that's visuals. What excites me about VR games is the ability to be a participant in the game. VR is unique in that it lets us teleport the player to another world. One of the best places you can help transport yourself is at the controls of a giant robot. The sense of presence into the soul of a 20-story machine is an incredible experience. The story that unfolds is completely a result of the choices you make. Feel the powerful weight of the grinder as you lumber through vast open terrain. Making you feel like you're right in the middle of the action is one of the things we can achieve. Explore vast alien bodies that present challenges in both terrain and environment. And since the setting will be unique every time, you'll have to be prepared. Intuitive yet challenging combat is at the heart of the boxing machine. As we move forward, I think Space Bullet will provide a home for talented individuals. We will strive to continue to provide an exciting and unique experience like Xbox Machine for people everywhere. I'd like to see Space Bullet grow and create the one-of-a-kind experiences that can only come from an independent team willing to try something new.
So, uh, pretty cool, right? I mean, you know, cooler in VR, but at least cool that we can show you guys something. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm Jacob, and Josh, who's right now running to get a power cable so that we can actually demo for you guys, uh, is going to be joining me, and we're going to be down over here with a large TV, hopefully showing you some awesome stuff. So please come by. Uh, we got tons of business cards, so you can get our contact info and check the game out online at the website. Uh, yeah, thanks for your time, guys. Yep. And what concludes the talking part? Oh, do we have you have one more announcement? Ah, I didn't know. All right. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Dude. This is Kwan. Well, last month we we sent up a um, independent like we said, a co-working space for ind independent developers in New West. Um, it's like one stop away from the, it's really close to the new SkyTrain. train. And um, we're just wondering if anyone wants to come work with us. Um, it's like pretty reasonable rates for, like, per month. And it's basically like open workspaces and there's also offices for uh, like studios too. We also throw uh, events over every once in a while and we have lots of fun, make games. You won't sleep much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be in the demo center. Uh, just come and find us if you want to, if you're interested in more more about it. <laughs> Thank you. And Hi there, I'm David. I came with a group of uh, Central Digital Media students, and we brought a little game that we did for the Ludum there recently, and we would love for everyone who would, have, who would like to play our game. Uh, to give us some feedback, it's just this retro game, uh, a space shooting game, and we'll have our game uh, on the left hand side of the, the bar. If you want to come, we'd love for you to just take a look and give us your feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now it's officially time for the networking part and the drinking part, where the good secret comes out, as Alex likes to say. And uh, I would love to um, say, I'd be as uh, well spoken as Jacob was when he was wishing you all a very happy holiday season, so uh, we will just play the tape back of what he said, because it was very <laughs> awesome. Have fun guys, thanks for coming. Woo!